You don't know, bro, but the admirals in One Piece possess powers that tie them directly to nature's most powerful forces. This consistent pattern reveals a deeper theme connecting the admirals to the overwhelming might of nature itself. From Akinu's magma, capable of reshaping islands, to Kizaru's manipulation of light, Kuzan's freezing abilities, Fujitora's gravity, and Green Bull's command over plant life, each admiral symbolizes an aspect of nature that can either protect or destroy. This isn't just a coincidence. Oda likely made a deliberate choice to portray the admirals as embodiments of nature's wrath, reinforcing the idea that, like nature, they have the power to decimate anything in their path if they choose to. One possible theory is that Oda chose to give the admirals these natural attributes to emphasize the role of nature in the world of One Piece. Nature is an unstoppable force, just as the admirals represent an almost insurmountable obstacle for anyone standing in their way. If you look at the admirals, they act almost like the world's natural order, maintaining balance in the same way that nature balances life. Their powers can serve both as protectors of the status quo and as harbingers of destruction, just as nature itself can either nurture life or wipe it out in a moment of disaster. This reflects a delicate balance where civilization and nature are constantly at odds mirroring the Marines' role in maintaining control. But why are only admirals given these natural abilities? One theory could be that their connection to nature serves as a symbol of the world government's iron grip over the world, hinting that nature itself has been harnessed by them to control the fate of nations. It's a fascinating parallel between the unrelenting power of the admirals and the uncontrollable force of nature itself making them some of the most formidable characters in the story. Now, diving deeper into the symbolism of Sun God, Nikia and his connection to Zoro and Sanji, another layer of meaning emerges. As we can see, there is a picture of Nika holding a weapon in one hand and a shield in the other. But we think Luffy hasn't obtained any weapon or shield. And here we are totally wrong because he has already acquired his weapon, the sword who is Zoro, and the shield who is Sanji. If we consider Nika as the ultimate embodiment of freedom and resilience, Zoro and Sanji can be seen as extensions of his essence. Zoro, with his unmatched swordsmanship, serves as the sword of Nika, his strength, resolve, and will to cut down any obstacle in Luffy's path mirror, the sharpness and precision of a blade, an indispensable weapon for Nika's quest for liberation. Sanji, on the other hand, represents the shield. His selfless desire to protect his comrades, combined with his defense of Luffy's ideals, makes him the perfect counterbalance to Zoro's offense, just as a shield protects a warrior in battle. Sanji is always there to safeguard the crew, whether by standing against foes or nurturing them in times of need. Together, Zoro and Sanji represent Nika's perfect synergy of offense and defense, embodying the strength to both fight for freedom and protect it. And then we come to Sengoku, who wields the power of the Buddha fruit. As someone who literally transforms into a deity, Sengoku plays an interesting role in this dynamic. If Zoro and Sanji represent the weapons of Sun God Nika, Sengoku represents control over the natural laws themselves. The Buddha in his mythology is a symbol of enlightenment and control over the natural world. Sengoku's powers over nature reflect the Admiral's role in maintaining balance, but from the perspective of higher authority, this is the ultimate power of law and order, making Sengoku not just a wielder of natural forces, but a master of them. As for Garp, it's intriguing that he stands outside this divine or nature-related system, perhaps re enforcing the idea that Garp is a force unto himself. Despite not having eaten a devil fruit, he is still considered among the strongest. This suggests that Garp embodies pure human will and strength, untouched by outside forces like nature or devil fruits. In many ways, Garp may represent the strength of humanity in its rawest form, unshackled by powers yet still capable of competing with gods. This layering of themes, from the Admiral's connection to nature to Zoro and Sanji's roles in Nika's life, suggests that Oda is exploring much deeper meanings behind the characters' powers and the roles they play in the story's grand design. It ties into the overarching question of what true power really is, whether it comes from nature, gods, or the indomitable spirit of humanity itself. The video ends here, but I'd like to know your opinions, so make sure to let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll meet again with another amazing video. Until then, goodbye.